Welcome everybody, this is Waze back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you React Hooks. Hooks came into React 16.8. When you build React apps, you are expecting the data your app uses to change over time. Whether it's fully self-rendered or a mobile app, or all the browser in your application use interface should represent the current data or state at the time of rendering. That's where the React hooks comes in if you are using function-based component. We're going to be looking at what is use state. We take a look at effects, rule of hooks, and we take a look at how do we build our own custom hooks. I'm going to click on hooks API reference, and here we got basic hooks, right? We got some additional hooks like use reducer, use callback, use memo, use ref. And in this video, we're just going to focus on two hooks, use state and use effect. And I'll slightly touch use context as well. React hooks can add state to the function components, as we've already mentioned. But one of the core strands is how it synchronizes application and component state with the UI. As the state changes based on the user interaction or data updates from a system or network, React intelligently and efficiently work out what changes and what part of the UI should be re-rendered. I'm going to use VS Code and I'm going to create a new project. We got a fresh React project using TypeScript as a template. Let's run this React app. I'm going to remove some code. For example, remove that a tag, p tag. You don't need the, you don't need that header, so get rid of that as well. In this file, we got one component called app, and it's got one div. I'm going to type a value, which is going to be number, let's say ten. And instead of just typing a ten, I'm going to use a use state hook. So right above, I'm going to write a comment, import use state from React. Okay, let's uh, uncomment this. I'm going to use a destructuring there. And let's use use state. And let's get rid of this. Okay, let's give it a space there. Now we're going to use use state. So I'll just create a const and I'll just say count, set count, and then use state, which is this hook that we're using from React. Now within here, I'm going to read the value of count. And I do that by using curly brackets, I'll just say count, and you'll see the value is zero. Now use state basically gives us two things. One is a variable that is going to be holding the value of the current state. And the second one is a function that is returned from your state, which we can call to update the value. For example, here is a div. I'm going to create a button and we just say on click. And then this is like a, you know, on this function we call set count and a count plus one. So if I go ahead and make a plus there, as you can see, it is incrementing. And I'm also going to create another button. So let's make a copy there. And here I'm going to say minus and then change this to minus as well. Okay. Maybe we're going to move this, let's say up like that. And now if I go plus, you go minus and you can see the component is basically holding its state and increment on this button click and decrement on this button click. Right now we're using zero as initial value. Instead of just having integer, we can also use any primitive data type. I'm going to paste a code snippet where we have constant object, set object, use state, and here's a simple object that we're setting as an initial state. Now this can be array or just string or object or array of objects. It doesn't matter as long as it's a valid data type, use state will work with that. Just to recap what we've learned so far. So what is a hook? A hook is a special function that lets you hook into React features. 
For example, useState is a hook that lets you add React state to function component. Now, when you want to use a hook, well, if you write a function component and realize that you need to add some state to it, previously we had to use uh, class-based components where we had to use a state differently. But now you can use these hooks inside a function component to maintain the state of your data. Next, we're going to learn effect hook. Here's the documentation for that. In the class component, you remember you had some life cycles to deal with. In the sample code snippet, you can see it says it is similar to component did mount and component did update. Let's go back to the code and take a look at an example. I'm going to get rid of this code there and I'm going to use effect state. It's going to automatically import that for us and I'm going to press space. I'm going to paste the same example from a documentation. So here we got this use effect and we got this document.title, which is going to access the title of the web page, which is here. And here you got this tilt, you click count times. And this count, it's going to read from here. Okay, so if I save the application, you will see it says you clicked times. In React class based components, you will have to use component did update a lifecycle to basically detect anything changes. But use effect is pretty awesome. It is all automatically going to detect if the value changes for anything within the use effect, it's going to rerun. And if we can make a plus, you will see that it is updating five above in the title as well. But also in class based components, we have a, a way to clean up when your component get destroyed. And within use effect, you can do that by just returning a function. And this is just a cleanup function that will run when your component is destroyed. And that's about it for use effect and also use state. Quick recap, you gotta go take a look at this using this state hook and using effects for text-based information. If you're interested, you can go to hooks API reference. Here you'll see some other hooks as well provided by React. For example, this use context. Additional hooks are available here as well, like use register, use callback, use memo, use wrap. So these are advanced hooks provided by React, which we will learn in the later videos. And also we'll create a video about how to build your own custom hooks, which is one of the greatest things that this hook API provides. All right, that's about it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.